Hey, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, all of you. Uh, welcome to our second episode of Data Pancakes. Uh, thanks a lot for the uh, first episode and the reception we had with the first episode. Uh, we really see this as uh, a lot of interest in the industry. Right? So it's one of the reasons why we embarked on this journey to get together and then start these episodes on data mesh and related concepts. So uh, that said, some brief history of like what are we going to cover in this episode and what did we finish in the previous one, right? Uh, so in the previous episode, we talked about the introductory piece, like what are we going to cover? Uh, what is basically going to be explained during this series and why we think it's important. Continuing with that concept, I would say uh, one of the major factors which we see in the industry as, as Microsoft, but also discussing with other, the communities outside, is that uh, there's a lot of interest in data mesh, right? So, and that concept itself is 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 overloaded, right? So there are a lot of definitions of what is a data mesh. There are a lot of opinions on what is a data mesh, what is a data product, what is a data domain, and there's no one single answer for it, right? So there are multiple definitions for it and not everything is wrong. It really depends on context. So within this episode, we really want to uh, work with you uh, in this sense to, to walk you through and Pete Hine and myself will be actually trying to explain what are the concepts which you have inside a data mesh. So with this, uh, I would like to pass it over. Pete Hine, one question to you is basically with your experience on the field as a CDO and for Netherlands as well as outside, how do you think, what's the definition of data mesh? Can you kind of put it into one single definition or are there multiple definitions? Is it right? Is there one single definition or the multiple single definitions? Can you explain a bit on that to give our viewers some context on what are the different definitions for a data mesh, a data product, a data domain? Uh, question and could you bring this up, Surat? But before we di really dive deep into this, I would like to stress out that the views we express over here are ours and not necessarily Microsoft views. So the views might overlap, but uh, here in, in this, this podcast, uh, these views are mainly ours. So coming back to data mesh, so what I mostly see when I discuss data mesh with my uh, chief data officers, it's, it's primarily about taking away bottlenecks, um, striving for higher agility within the organization when it comes to using data at large. And I think you can easily draw a parallel or make the comparison with um, other observations we already have seen within the market. So take for instance, API management. In the past, we had the classic, more traditional enterprise service bus, um, allowing applications to easily integrate and communicate with one and another. And what we saw there, I think in the past was also a central team owning, managing the enterprise service bus. And for each new application, it had to be onboarded by that central team. And then the team um, oversees all the APIs that are implemented within the enterprise service bus. And they also describe how these APIs should look for that they use an, an, a common central canonical data model or API management model. And similarly, I think we also saw that for software development. So when building applications, it's not that one team manages and design and implements and builds all applications. I think now with microservices, we can allow other teams to easily build and configure and implement services, microservices themselves. And for that, again, you need to have a central team facilitating and helping and supporting those other teams. So, so this is where you then, for instance, see uh, Kubernetes infrastructure being managed and offered as a service to watch other teams. And I think similarly now we see the same trend um, happens within uh, data management. So, so in, instead of integrating, combining um, all data within a an, an single architecture and enterprise data warehouse, for instance, um, it's now predominantly how can we allow other teams to do the management and distribution integration and building the use cases on top of the data themselves. So that's, that's I think, the common theme I see um, within the industry and when I discuss data management um, with my peers. Great. Yeah, I think that was really useful, Pitain. So that that is a good bridge to our second piece in this, right? So from our perspective, when we look at it, we have 
a lot of discussions with the customers and and there are some core concepts which have to be clear when you are talking about their data mesh pattern right and the second most important piece in that is domains and it drives a lot of discussions at our customers and basically many people are opinionated on a particular definition of a domain uh, some people say like this is the only way to define your domain uh, but basically we see that there are different flavors and it really depends on basically how your organization is is set up for instance and let's shed some light on this right so the second question to you would be like how would you define domains is there a single way to define a domain from your expertise and and your interactions with both the nl as well as the global customers have you examples of where you think that yeah maybe this definition is very very useful for this firm but totally irrelevant for a different form could you shed some light on this it's it's a difficult subject um the the definition itself so domain i think predominantly comes from the book domain driven design um uh, by eric evans and um it's it's mainly used for setting a logical boundary on on where you see the cohesion is high um but but yeah still this makes it very abstract and we predominantly see domains in that aspect being used within software architecture and in my previous role, I um, often had a conversation with my chief architect and we draw a parallel with the real world. So maybe let me take that first as an example and then how to project that on, on data management and data. So in the real world, we also use boundaries quite a lot. So imagine a pancake restaurant in which we bake pancakes. The, the restaurant itself could be a boundary, but when we zoom into the restaurant, there might be a kitchen again, which could be a clear boundary and there could be the room where the people eat and where the pancakes are being served. The pancake itself could even also be a boundary. Or when we look at the restaurant and we zoom out, um, we see a broader view, which then also might include the garden or the entry, so the pathway towards the restaurant. So that could be a larger boundary as well. So it's 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 mainly for setting boundaries, and what we see also in in real life is um, when yeah scoping things and putting boundaries, there are often clear rules, like in the restaurant. So the the sharp knives remain and should stay in the kitchen. So this is, I think, also a rule um, you you mostly see in real life, which can easily be applied on data management. So when when then looking at at, at data management and and data mesh. It's it's the same. So we define boundaries. Um, the examples that Magdegani uses in her book um, are predominantly, I think, and mostly correlate to what I see within uh, microservices and the interfaces. So she uses samples like a playlist, artist, song. So those examples come from Spotify, um, which in in a way makes sense. So that's I think uh, one way of 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 looking boundaries and the way maybe data products are being developed or interfaces and data is being served to others. But most organizations find, I think, this viewpoint um, rather complex and, and they rather would like to use the viewpoint of looking at responsibilities teams and people should take over their data. And I think there the viewpoint more often is being used so as grouping domains more rather than using data, but more of looking at people, applications, and the processes. So a domain in that respect is more a business domain rather than a data domain or an interface domain. But again, yeah, that all said, I think when you use the word domain, you should be, I think, cautious of what is the viewpoint you are using when describing domains, because that, I think, um, those two are very well related. So it's important to do that. and. Last remark, so the definition of domain is what I say, it's more polymorphic. So yeah, these domains could even overlap or cross each other, again, depending on the viewpoint you take. Great definition for this behind. So that kind of is a natural evolution to our third most important topic, which we discuss with customers and comes up a lot during our daily discussions on data mesh. And again, a lot of opinionated preferences on how do we define this that's data product right and to the, your example which we went earlier where you said okay when you're creating a pancake you have a kitchen and then you could come lower and lower to say like there would be different boundaries you define this but in that kitchen like how do i define a data product right so basically 
that's a dilemma which many customers and users are having today. So could you shed some light on that? And exactly like what you explained earlier, what are the major dilemmas which you see when you're defining a data product at a particular enterprise? Looking at the theory and the book of Samak Digani, she defines a data product as the combination of infrastructure, code, data, and metadata. So those four dimensions are all grouped together and closely encapsulated into a tiny logical architecture, which could be potentially as tiny as a microservice. But in my view, this causes some dilemmas because the metadata not necessarily always sits closely attached with the data itself, but it could also be very well managed for instance, within a data catalog. Or the infrastructure, in most cases I see among customers, um, is likely to be shared between teams, so not necessarily is closely coupled or related to the definition of how it has been defined in the book of, um, of data mesh. Um, unfortunately, there's no, no common term or definition used within the industry. So if you start Googling around and, and looking up uh, that word data product, you you read and stumble upon different things. So some people say, well, um, yeah, it's that combination again of uh, of those four elements. But others, more often, I see refer to an actual artifact, so a report or a data set that might sit somewhere in your lake. Also important to stress out here: there's a difference between the artifact and managing data as a product. So that letter, I see it's more the activities surrounding managing data. So that could be describing data, cataloging data, providing the metadata, taking ownership, but may, maybe even promoting data throughout the organization. So all these activities um, are what I um, are considered part of managing data as a product. The way I personally would describe it, I would rather see a data product more as a logical entity. So something you define somewhere, for instance, in a data catalog. And then from there onwards, you draw relationships to where the actual, maybe physical data resides. So maybe a data product is defined logically as one entity, but has, I think, different maybe data sets physically attached to it. Or maybe you describe it once logically, but it has the same data sets, but those are stored in different file formats or types. And from that same logical entity, you can also then easily draw relationships to other uh, logical objects. So maybe a an, an data product has an owner or um, its data is linked to a platform or the data product is linked logically to an application where the actual data originates from. So I would rather define a data product more as a logical entity that sits on the business layer than yeah, those, those four dimensions um, I mentioned before. Great. Yeah, so that gets us to the question about, okay, now we discuss like three most asked or discussed topics when you get into this discussion, right? So what is a data mesh? What is a data product? What is a data domain? So from your perspective, before we start our deep diving into these concepts and getting into the journey of kind of really looking at how this is working out in practice, do you think there are more topics which are viewers need to know before we embark on this deep dive journey uh, two more important topics so there are four principles um, that come with building and implementing a data mesh um, concept or architecture so the first one we discussed so that's decentralized data ownership so you need to set boundaries and define your domains and set these boundaries really well and clear including the principles like we discussed, attached to it. There's managing data as a product. So that's the second item we discussed. There's self-serve data platform. So you need to have infrastructure, a platform there to allow teams to easily integrate, extract data, distribute it between one and another. So that's the self-serve data platform principle. And the last one is about the governance. So federated computational governance. So the governance is not being done central, but it's more federated across the organization and the word computational is well you should make it smart and do the enforcement ideally automated via policies you set maybe within your architecture so hence that word computational so those are the four principles in nutshell and if i may bring up a final slide or picture so here on my screen now you see it all comes together so 
we have data that originates uh, somewhere so on the providing uh, side so source oriented domains is that being called within data mesh so this is where the data is being managed within application source systems those teams ideally should take ownership and they make data available in in a construct or an, a model what is called today a data product so data that is easy um, consumable user friendly has been well described um, and is managed somewhere within that self serve data platform and then on the consuming side likely we will see uh, domains as well uh, the data uh, products not necessarily immediately would meet the requirements on the right hand side so therefore hence i expect a consumer specific transformation step always will be required and then from there it could lead uh, to all kind of new uh, use cases uh, these consuming domains will work upon and these consumers likely uh, could also become data providers so conceptually uh, you could position them even on uh, the left side as well and below uh, there's a, a data marketplace um, yeah, as part of the self-serve data platform that allows users to um, really take ownership promote uh, data ownership uh, the usage of data pro products so it's about democratizing data management throughout the organization and at last there should be an, an foundational team um, owning the data management capabilities and, and providing um, all of these towards the organization. So in this diagram, it all uh, nicely comes together. And what um, Surat, you and I would like to do next uh, um, episode or podcast is to really make this concrete and show how domains would look like in Fabric and um, also explain the difference between a, what is an application domain, a data domain, an and, um a domain model for instance so go a bit more deeper into the domains but also show really practically how it could work and will look like in microfabric great thanks a lot Pitain. so i think uh, our viewers have really got an idea of what are the main concepts which are required for them to understand what is a data mesh what is a data product what's a data domain right and of course in the next few episodes we are going to dive deeper into the concept of domains and we will continue to show you how this is really implemented within fabric so stay tuned and thanks a lot for joining us today take care bye bye